Let's look at an example where we calculate the shear force and the bending moment at a particular point on a beam. For this particular example, we're going to have a beam of something like this. So this is a pin support. And uh, let's see, one, two, three, uh, one, two, one, two. Okay, something like this. And by the way, this is not only for beams, this can be applied to any type of structures, right? So you can actually, uh, if you Google in um, shear force diagrams on moment diagrams, you can see how um, the internal forces are derived for uh, buildings and other type of structures. By the way, we're gonna look at those shear and bending diagrams um, uh, later um, in another video. But for now, we're gonna calculate the uh, internal forces at a particular point. Uh, in this case, we're going to have the beam divided in different parts. I'm going to say that this is three meters. This is two meters. Another two meters. And we're going to have a distributed force applied on this part of the structure. And the magnitude of that distributed force is going to be 1.5 kilonewtons per meter. Uh, we're gonna call this point A, this point B, this point over here, we're gonna call it C, and this, we're gonna call it D. What we need to do is we want to calculate the shear and the bending moment at C. So that's that's our goal, right? So find V and M at C. And remember that V is what we use for shear. Okay, very good. So the first thing I need to do is to be able to find the reaction forces at A and at D. And for that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to replace that distributed force by, by an equivalent uh, point load, right? So let's do that. I'm going to say, um, I'm going to replace this my equivalent. And I'm going to skip a, a step of what we traditionally use. We usually do the equivalent diagram and then we do the free body diagram. I'm going to go ahead and do my free body diagram with my equivalent load, right? So, okay, so we have here A, we have here D, and A, and now I have AY, AX, a D, we have DY. It's a roller, so it does not have any support or any reaction forces in my X direction. Now that 1.5 kilonewton uh, over meter force, we can replace it by a point load and it's going to, it's going to go uh, through the centroid, which is right at C actually, right? It's the middle, in the middle of that rectangle, okay? And the magnitude of that force is going to be 1.5 uh, kilonewtons over meter times four meters. So that will give us six kilonewtons, that's the magnitude. And the location is two meters. So this is distance over here. It's two meters from this end, right? That makes this distance over here five meters. So this is my equivalent system, my equivalent free body diagram, or the free body diagram of my equivalent system. All right, so now I'm going to uh, write my equations of equilibrium, and that is, this is nothing new, right? We have, uh, we're gonna start with my sum of the forces in X are equal to zero. The only force that we have is AX, so we have that AX is equal to zero, very good. I'm going to do my sum of the moments about A. That has to be equal to zero also because we're in equilibrium. All right, so we have that, that uh, six kilonewton force is gonna 
create a negative moment, right? And the moment is going to be 6 times 5. That's the perpendicular distance. And my dy will create a positive moment about a, and that will be 7 dy. From here, I can find that dy is going to be 30 over 7, or 4.286 kilonewtons. And that's my dy. Now we can do the sum of the forces in uh, my y. Right? Oh, by the way, I forgot my axis. x, y. Now we know what direction is x, what direction is y. That, that some of the forces in y should be equal to zero because we are in equilibrium. And we have a y. We have that six kilonewton force going down, so don't be minus six. And we have dy, which is 4.286. So my a y should be equal to um, six minus 4.286, and that will give me one point. 714 kilonewtons. Remember, these are all intermediate calculations, and I'm trying to keep four significant figures for all these numbers when I report them. Okay, so we've not done anything new at this stage. All we've done is we found the reaction forces for that structure. The next step is I need to make a cut on that structure, right? And when I do that cut, I need to go back to my original diagram. The reason is, if you look at the, the, at the free body diagram of the bottom, I have replaced the distributed load with an equivalent point load. So if I cut my free body diagram at the bottom, I'm not going to consider the distributed force and that will give me the incorrect result. So it's very important to go back to your original diagram and do the cut in your original diagram. So we're gonna do a cut and that cut, cut is going to be um, let's see, it's going to be somewhere in here, right? We're going to find my forces at C, right? So trying to find my forces at C, I'm going to, I'm going to draw the right hand side of that diagram. I can do my left hand side. That is not different. I'm just going to do my right hand side because it's going to be a little bit, um, a little bit easier, I think. Going to be less things to, to worry about. Results should give you exactly the same if you do your left-hand side diagram. All right, so when I do uh, my free body diagram of my cut, we're going to see the following. Uh, I'm going to see my beam. Okay, I'm going to do that beam a little bit uh, somewhere over here. So I'm going to move it towards the towards the left. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, okay? So I'm saying that this part is <coughs> two meters. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> All right, and then what I have, I know that <coughs> on my right-hand side, we have dy, and we know that value already. That's 4.286 kilonewtons. But on top, I still have my distributed force, right? I have my distributed force. I'm gonna keep my distributed force. I'm gonna tell you why in a minute. That's for now, 1.5 kilonewtons per meter. Okay, very good. Now we need to write all the internal forces. I'm gonna put those on red, in red. Okay. Um, okay, so we already said um, a default for positive shear, positive bending moment. That means that my default for my positive shear is going to be going up, and that should be right in the phase of your cut. My positive bending moment is something like this, and my normal force which will be something like that. So those are the three forces that I need to find. Those are my unknown forces right now. My shear, my bending moment, and my normal force. Okay, very good. Um, I think we have all the information. The only thing that we need in addition to this are my axis, x, y. Uh, 
But now, can we deal with this distributed force? Not really, right? So I need to do my equivalent point load. All right, let's do that again. I have my beam, my x-axis. My equivalent point force is going to be right in the middle of those two meters because we have a rectangle. The centroid will be right in the middle. And the magnitude is going to be three kilonewtons, right? That will be the area, the area of that, of that uh, uh, distributed load on the top. This distance is going to be one meter. Um, the rest is going to be another meter. And we also have my uh, internal forces. Those have not changed. My shear, my bending moment, and my normal force. Okay, now, now I am in a position to be able to solve for those unknown forces. So how we solve for those unknown forces? Exactly the same way that we did in the past. We do our equations of equilibrium. And now that I have drawn my positive shear and bending moment, I forget about the fact they're positive or negative. I just treat them as I treat them uh, any external forces in the past. So um, my equations of equilibrium I'm going to do the same thing that I said before. Some of the forces in X equal to zero. So that means that my normal force is zero. Right. Uh, I'm going to do some of the moments about the cut, right? And that cut is this point over here. So some of the moments about the cut. And, oh, forgot my reaction force. I was going to say that. Can I be an equilibrium? Okay. 4.286 kilonewtons. There you go. My reaction force. So I'm going to have that 3 kilonewton force will create a negative moment about um, that cut. So we have um, minus 3 times 1. That's the perpendicular distance. That 4.286 creates a positive moment. So that would be 4.286 times two meters. That's the perpendicular distance. And then my bending moment, uh, well, it's is written in such a way that it's gonna be a negative M, right? Negative M. And that's how we're gonna write it in that equation, negative M. So for the equations of equilibrium, you still take the right-hand rule, but to decide how you're going to draw it in your unknown forces in your free body diagram, you take the positive and negative definitions that we did in the, pri the previous video. From here, I can say that my moment is going to be equal to 557 Kilonewtons. By the way, this all of this is equal to zero, right? Because we're in equilibrium. So we have my bending moment at C. And the last, we can do my sum of the forces in Y, which is also equal to zero because we're in equilibrium. Uh, we have my shear force going up. So it would be V. My three kilonewton force is going down. And the 4.286 is going up. So my shear force is going to be minus 1.29 kilonewtons. We want to keep our three significant figures to report my final answers. <clears throat> so there you have it. It's uh, the idea of these uh, uh, internal forces is to be able to cut the element at that particular location, uh, set your shear force, your bending moment, and based on the positive definitions that we did in the prior video, and then solve for the unknowns using the equations of equilibrium as we've done before. In many cases, you're gonna have to find your support reactions first, and then do the cut, and then solve for the unknowns.